Yo, what's good guys? I hope you're all well. Sorry for the wacky upload schedule. I'ma try to get my shit together. Please forgive me. I will try not to keep abandoning you. So, today I'm going to teach you how to photo manipulate inside of Photoshop. In the background, you're currently watching a time lapse of how I created the thumbnail. Now, the idea behind photo manipulation, and honestly guys, it's such a cool effect, you can literally do anything you want with it. It's basically you choose some photography, you create a scene using the photography, and then using visual effects, you make it look like it's real, or in this case, kind of stylized. I put some photo manipulation artwork up on my Instagram story about a week ago, and you all seemed eager to learn. Now there's already a fair few photo manipulation tutorials on YouTube, but you guys know I like to simplify my tutorials as much as possible, whilst also pushing the aesthetic in a more like artistic, experimental direction to try and make it stand out a bit, you get me? Anyway, in today's video we're going to be focusing on water. I've collected a bunch of pictures that might help you if you also want to make a water scene. Shout out to Clean PNG for the pictures. If you guys can get this video to 5,000 likes, so smash that freaking like button right now, I'll make a part two where we can pick a new scene instead of water and we'll go further into detail with more effects and everything like that. Right eye, let's open up Photoshop and let's begin. Alright guys, so this is a photo manipulation that I made just a few days ago. Uh, I put it up on my Instagram. If you're not following my Instagram, that's just straight up disrespectful. But anyway, I put this on Instagram. I thought it was quite cool. I feel like everything looks like it's really there. The main things with photo manipulation, I'll just run you through the basics, like the most important things to me. The resolution is probably number one. You've got to make sure all the files you're using are a high enough quality. If the whale you throw in is like low quality, it's going to ruin the whole image. Number two is perspective. Now, right as I said that, I've noticed the perspective on this could be better. What I mean by that is this layer here at the bottom of the ocean really should be more like that because of the top of the ocean you know this part here um if that makes sense but yeah percept uh, per per what's the word perspective is really really important like with the first one that you saw the little yachty one i had to kind of frame it so the ground was like flattened and you get what i'm saying number three is depth of field so as you can see down here in the bottom of the ocean there's like parts that are blurry now this is because underwater there's going to be there just is going to be parts that are blurry the further away you get the more it needs to be blurry and let's say you have something in the foreground like there's a bird really close up you want it to be very crisp and then if there's a bird further away like this one over here super blurry and um like there's more blue there's more sky in between him and the other bird uh, I've also added a lot of effects like I like to do. I've used things like oil paint and um, some kind of RGB glitch just to tie everything in together. Number four would be get good assets. So um, most of the assets that I've used here are in the little pack that you can find down in the description. Uh, but you can just search around on the internet for high definition uh, assets. I find if you type in VFX, so like uh, water VFX, you typically get better images than just typing in um, uh, water PNG. So give that a go and then texture textures the last thing so you want to put some noise like if you want the the bottom of the ocean to be quite crisp you want to make it crisp and then i suppose a lack of texture as well like blurring certain parts and then i use like splashes and all of that so yeah let's let's begin to make a scene together guys so i can walk you through it in more detail i'm gonna make a new document and i'm gonna go 1920 by 1080 and I'm gonna start pulling in some assets from my pack. So the file called water16 is this one. Uh, we need to make it a bit bigger, so I'm gonna duplicate it and pull it over to here. And now we're gonna try and merge these together. So I found a part here where it's almost exactly the same size. Now using a big eraser with a very soft opacity, I'm just gonna slide down here. Uh, no one will know that you've done this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find more ocean effects so that I can fill this white gap at the bottom. So I quite like some of the effects in this one. I'm trying not to reveal too much because there's some water effects here that wouldn't be there. Because that's like the top of the ocean type thing. Now I'm going to add a layer over the top of this, which is going to be the color of this water. So I've just tool picked around here. So now we have this color here because it gets a little bit too dark for my liking. I have this picture of clouds here, which I want to use because look how amazing these clouds are. 
because of the sun rays i think we need to have a sun in the scene somewhere so let me find a picture of some sunlight quickly all right i'm gonna use this one uh, i'm gonna try some different blending modes to see if one of them will just do this part for me so i think that right there looks pretty cool um but what it's done is it's obviously meant that this part here goes goes a bit wrong so what we'll do is we'll put it back to normal for now that's overlay mode that i was using then but we'll put it back to normal uh, and then i can select this color here and then i can fill the rest of the sky in with that color and then if we merge both of those layers together there you go and I set it to overlay it's done the whole thing for us i'm also going to rub out where it goes under the water a little bit I notice there's something going on here. What's this? Oh, it's just because we need to add some more blue to the to the overlay layer. And now it's time to add our own sun flare. So I'm gonna use a white brush to do this. On a new layer at the top, I'm gonna click once right where the sun is, and then I'm gonna go like over to here and just put them in some random places like that. I'm thinking overlay mode mixed with a variety of blurs. Right, I think we need something right towards the bottom of the ocean just to make it look a bit more interesting and I love this texture right here. Yeah, so I'm like an overlay mode and I'm lowering the opacity. So it's just a really, really minimal effect. That's really what photo manipulation is about. It's just adding loads of different textures, loads of different effects, and just making sure everything fits into the scene. So, right, so now let's get a sea creature into the design. I'm gonna maybe look for an octopus. I'm currently unsure when trying different PNGs, what makes a PNG work and what makes one not work because I've tried doing a lot of um, animals and stuff on photo manipulations where it just doesn't fit the scene. Um, but let's see if we can make this octopus look cool. So first thing is to decide how big it is. Um, obviously if it's like this big then it's right at the front of the screen. If it's like this then it's a really distant creature and it needs to be um, blurred and very very lost in the ocean. So the first thing that I would do in order to see if it's going to work in this scene is select the color balance adjustment layer. Click on it and then clip it to the octopus. Now with this, you can change all the colors. So you want to make the cyan more cyan. You see that that's given it some blue. And then where it's yellow and blue, you want to make it more blue like that. And then the magenta and green one doesn't matter too much. Both of them could work in their own way. I'm thinking slightly more green. You can also see that there's some dodgy edges around the side of the octopus. Um, if the octopus is going to look good in this scene, I'm probably going to go around and clean it up a little bit. So the next thing that I would do is add another layer to the top of the octopus, make sure it's also clipped. And you just want to select the color of the ocean around the octopus and draw him out like that. If you want to be really specific, you can give it a few different layers of color like that. Um, and then you would just lower the opacity of that until you have the amount of visibility you'd like for the octopus. Now, if you don't really have an eye for stuff like this, you can just literally go onto Google Images and type in like octopus underwater until you find an image that's close enough to yours to where you can just copy the color. I hope I'm explaining how to do this properly. I'm really bad in, in some of my tutorials actually explaining what I'm doing because it's so experimental, you know. I know a lot of um, YouTubers, they try to really plan everything out and just teach you precise steps, but I feel like it's also useful just to see how I would do it, you know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. I think the octopus needs to be breathing a few bubbles. Right, I think what we really need is a pirate ship. So the problem with this pirate ship is the shadows on the left side. So we got to flip it over. Put it over here, maybe. I'm feeling like that size is about right. It's hard to tell exactly. It's kind of up to you. And now we need to do some lighting effects. But this time we need to consider the fact that it's going to be above the water. So let's have a little experiment. Let's open up the color balance tool. Let's create a clipping mask and let's begin. All 
I'm going to make a layer above this and I'm going to choose the color of one of these clouds, like not the blue of the sky, but not the white of the cloud, somewhere in the middle. And we're just going to wash out the entire pirate ship and then create a clipping mask and then lower the opacity until you're happy with it because you know it won't be that dark something that far away is going to be slightly faded once again if you struggle to have an eye for this just get pictures up online of, of stuff and use it as a reference all right i'm happy with that i'm going to merge these layers together what i'm going to do now is i'm going to move the pirate ship down slightly because i think what will look cool is if it's slightly going into the water and disappearing like that so i'm going to choose a certain place here just to have that cut off happening in fact if we lower the opacity of the ship maybe we can do it with one of these waves copy delete and paste like that and then drop the opacity right down like that this is the splash that i used in the piece that i showed you earlier and you can see this is where the resolution matters because for example the water's kind of blurry this is really crisp and it makes it stand out horribly so um we'll definitely need to fix that but first i'm going to get rid of a lot of this splash because it's not necessary i'm also going to use this it's inside the water pack and i'm just going to use it to create the effect of splashing all around the ship i'm going to put it underneath the other two splashes because i feel like they are a little bit more exaggerated and cool looking all right now the first two that we chose that i mentioned was too were too crisp will just add a little blur to them a little motion blur that will remove how crisp they are something like that and even this this water splash here is too crisp as well so we'll blur that as well I would say maybe we should add an overlay to this this part of the water and make it a bit of a darker blue. I'm also going to drag down the bottom of this boat, exaggerate it a little bit, just because why not, it makes it look a bit better I think. And that bit there looks like it shouldn't be there so I'm going to get rid of it. Right, I feel like this is such a random tutorial but I don't know how else to teach it other than just showing you how I do it so let's continue. Um, the boat needs to be a little bit blurry so you know what I do I duplicate it first and then we do the blur a motion blur because these objects are all objects that would be in motion all right so I'm thinking I feel like the sails and all the, the, the ropes and stuff like that will be more blurry than the ship itself so I'm gonna straight up allow that to be mostly blurry um, and then we need to pick a focal point to view the ship at so maybe like around here because this is where the, the crispy part of the water is as well all right now i feel like the ship is a little bit too dark especially at the top so i'm going to add another clipping mask and i'm going to make it blue and i'm going to pick one of the layer modes that i think looks the best i'm going to use hard light and i'm going to lower the opacity something around here I'm going to show you an effect in a minute which should tie the whole image together if you're feeling like certain bits are out of place because i i see this a lot with photo manipulation it's like people have made a, a cool looking scene but everything really does look like it's been just dragged and dropped on including this one at the moment probably uh, so yeah i'll show you a few effects to fix that a little bit later on i want to make this splash a little bit more exaggerated so i'm going to grab the two splash layers that i've got merge them together make it a bit bigger and push it back a little bit like that set it to maybe overlay mode just like that so now you can see there's like water flicking up behind the boat as it swims along it's, you can see here where it's all splashing up i think that looks pretty cool all right i think the bottom of the ocean could do with being a bit lighter so a simple brush stroke like that set to overlay mode will probably fix that up and it's kind of looking too bright in the middle now so i'm gonna rub it out a little bit so yeah, it's only something simple, but it definitely makes the piece look a little bit better. Uh, and then if you want to go ahead and add the kind of, make it look like this whole image is framed, you can do something a bit like that around the sides and lower the opacity. So it looks like we're in a huge fish tank. Uh, I'm thinking that what we need is a little island. So I couldn't find any good PNGs, but we can quickly cut this out with the pen tool. So I'll select a little bit of water at the bottom just in case we want it. And just using the pen tool, I'm going to real quickly 
cut this out. Now the leaves are going to be a little bit tricky, um, but we'll go around it and just try and try and make it work. So number one's resolution. Number two is perspective. We're making sure the perspective, the proportion of it is correct and it looks good. Obviously I found an image where it's kind of flat on the water because if the camera is looking down at the island from above, it's not gonna work in this scene. All right, I've now found this image and I'm going to use it to create the bottom part of the island. So I'm gonna do one more thing, which is, so I'm gonna do one more thing. The water's pretty still, so we don't need any splashes on this on this island, but um, this part around the water, I think it's too, it's too green. The water isn't that color. So let's fix that by adding the right shade of water to it, setting it to color mode. There you go, that looks a lot more natural. Right, I've just realized how long this has taken me, so I'm gonna just show you the final thing, which is how I merge everything together to make it really look like it is just one scene by one artist. Um, wow, I hope I can manage to cut some of this down. I'm sure I can. Let's duplicate every single layer and merge it together. I'm gonna make an extra layer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna duplicate it one more time in case we need that. And I'm gonna add a color balance. And now we're gonna color grade the whole image together. So a little bit more towards the cyan and a little bit more towards the blue and a little bit more towards the magenta, I think is nice. In fact, instead of more towards cyan, I'm gonna go more towards red. I think that looks more fitting. So that's only a slight change, but it's pulling everything together. Now, this is a little trick I use. I stylize and I oil paint my image. You can copy these settings down. If you think it's too extreme when you hit apply, maybe halve these two. Um, but yeah, keep it all like this. Make sure lighting is not ticked. And now it's done this, which doesn't work on the ship or on the sky but um, it's definitely a cool watery effect. You see how cool the octopus looks? So you don't want it all to be like that, but you can rub out parts of it. Um, you can keep some of the texture at the bottom here. And we can definitely bring this guy back to life a bit. We need to bring most of the ship back to life. So now it's just really affected the water and the clouds, but it makes everything look really cool in my opinion and definitely blends things together in a very easy way. Right, the final effect is just framing the image with a texture. You can find the texture online. I'm pulling a texture out of my deluxe collage pack, which you can find on my website, but that is five pounds. For the sake of this tutorial, you can just find one on the internet, of course. But it's this one here that I like to use. It looks like this. You just put it up here and go through the blending options until you find the one that looks right. I'd say that it just really helps with the fish tank vibe that I was going for on the last piece. You know, it looks like you framed the whole image. So I'm thinking overlay mode, but overlay makes the water too dark. So I'm gonna do this in two different parts. And then I'll drag it in again and use a different effect for the bottom right corner. There you go guys, that's how you make your own photo manipulation fish tank in Photoshop. Such a random tutorial, um, really just experimental obviously, but now you guys know how I do it so you can download my files and use my technique to make your own one. If you like this video, drop a like. Like I said, I'll pick a new scene and go into more detail, maybe something more to do with my channel like a album cover photo manipulation tutorial or something like that. So yeah, just drop a like and leave a comment. If you're still watching, comment down below, squids are flids, okay? Alright, that's me out. Take care guys, see you in the next one.